Um, yeah, this is this is my story. So um, I am just a regular woman who thought she met the one, and I didn't. <laughs> um, most people have never came in contact with a pathological liar. We typically come in contact with like a compulsive liar. It is not the same. A pathological liar has no reason for why they lie. And the lies that they make up, there's no limit to the lie. Um, I was once a psychology major in undergrad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree. But I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. And yes, there was some mental, in my opinion, mental health issues going on. Pathological lying part, absolutely. Um, so I want to preface all this by saying, you're going to probably think, what in the world? There's no way this happened. Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of Lifetime movie, but I was. Um, so, I will read the comments as best I can. Like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Um, and sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just... It's a coping mechanism. So if you're like, why is she moving her hands? Um, other than that, let's all take a deep breath. Buckle in. Because this was a fucking crazy ride. And I if do. you think it's crazy, imagine how I feel as the person who lived it and had no it idea. It can't be that crazy, it. though. Is it that crazy, I child? thought I knew. But I truly had no idea who the fuck I married. What's up, Nami? Appreciate that. Anyway. All right, y'all. Um, this is the introduction, so welcome. To the Part one will be up shortly. If you're new, make sure you hit that follow button. Too. Hi, and welcome. We all know why you're here. You're here for part of the new series that I am calling. Please so? excuse the hair, but... Here oh, is part one of part one. who the fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March oh, 4th BP? What's good, of 2020. BP? We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did no, I not realize that he, he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the How other you doing, one bro? I hope you doing was good, a bro. variation, like a nickname. Um, Wait, hold on. What did she say? Hold on. I'm trying to listen like to this, a, too, bro. Um, I realized that in hit on. on March 4th of 2020, we met on Facebook dating site, and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name, and the other one was a variation, like a nickname. Um that he called himself different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag yeah, by the man. way you will you notice on, in this story i called it the united nations of red flags it is so many red flags that I'm watching this little thing I right mean, here bro you would have thought lady. I was colorblind she saying, because uh, I ignored she got all married of them. Something, so something anyway Back to the story. We met around March 4th. What you want, we man? exchanged phone numbers. He called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based God, baby, here in Georgia say the name and so we also talked about his childhood he told me um he grew up in philly he's from philly both of his parents were deceased this is the first phone call both Put of his parents were quick. deceased no, no, no. his father um was a philadelphia police officer his mom was a teacher 
He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he on, um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs. But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I, I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So... He told me, you know, I just, I just moved here. Um, I hope she wasn't married to this guy, bro. And they never, I don't know, bro. Um, but let's just my watch job is paying it's part for my one. We got 50 parts and to they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now. I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house. Ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I really would like to move out there. And so I thought, you know, this is that's great you know you're looking to get a house you just moved here he was like i don't really know too too many people here because i spend all my time at work and you know this job is really demanding so that was our first phone call we talked more he talked a lot which took me by surprise because i'm not really used to men talking more than me um he Females eventually not used to that, asked child. me out on a date our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited. Like I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully he looks like his pictures. So on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused. He got quiet and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are. Drop your pen. So I dropped the pen and he came to the gas station, came to the gas station, got out the car and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures. No, she just said, she just seen him. Tequila, he looked like his pictures. Bro, every, bro, this is going viral. Tequila, like, everybody talking about this, bro. Like, everybody, bro. The first introduction got, like, a million views. Bro, look how many tabs this got. Three, th bro, almost 400,000 tabs, bro. One million likes, bro. So, like, it's a lot of people watching this right now, bro. I'm just starting. That's why you see so many people saying, who just started? Roll call who just started. Raise your hand if you just now beginning. He said, I just canceled my Hulu subscription. Newbies, check in. Hey, y'all, it's my first day in class. <laughs> so everybody's watching this, bro. So I'm kind of like, 
I'm kind of late, bro. There's been, I mean, a lot of people is late, but. That I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive. Because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, okay. um, She's seen the guy. She's seen the guy. Oh, also, man, I apologize. So oh, let me change my, let me change my kick title. I don't know if, if, if hold on. I'm going to just put it in what? Put it in just chat. Let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that his ex-wife they had she had um, two children, a boy and a girl, who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about twenty, and he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids, um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him. Um, out in California and so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him oh, she God. was still out in California the kids were still out in California um, and so you know he was like there's no I, I can't stand her but I still want to be in the kids lives I have to put that in there because that will come back later so this is just setting the stage again that first conversation was we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, Hey, I found a plate, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, I'm, bro, I'm scared bro. Me to the, to the tire place and then helped me I'm get low -key a tire scared, bro. paid for it. So I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car. I get the tire fixed. I'm scared for the turning point. To the cheesecake factory, over in perimeter, we hold hands walking into the cheesecake factory. So in my mind, first day holding hands is crazy, bro. First day holding hands is crazy, bro. I'm not holding nobody here. First day, they chopped up on the phone, got to know each other. Now we walking in public holding hands. No. No, and I'm like crazy this woman. Is just this. Oh my God, I had butterflies. That that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. First day so is crazy. I had man. butterflies. They locked in. And, <laughs> um, hey, hey, that boy changed the tire and said, "Oh yeah, it's on the floor." <laughs> that boy changed the tire and said, "Oh yes, here we go, bro. This is what's gonna happen right here." We go in. There's a long. I'm scared wait. for the turning point, man. Like so a lot. we sit outside and we just talk, and the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for. He tells me, you know, I'm. I believe at the time he was 42. He was like, I want to get married, and it be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away. And I want that. I want marriage, family, a house. Like, that is what I want. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm as a man, I'm ready to get married, but I want it to be for real because the first time, you know, it really hurt me when she cheated on me. I'm so scared he's for the turn of everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, What is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. And this is the end of part one. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. Who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. Look at the comment. Somebody said, I just I, I just Googled arena football and the organi organization went bankrupt in 2018. So that means... Okay. Wait. I'm not looking at the comment chat. I'm not looking at the comment. I'm not looking at the comment. 
I look at the comment. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. We both had established we were dating. <gasps> no. Bruh. Please excuse the hair. Like, what the? Hold on, sir. I just did some bullshit. <laughs> I'm scared of the outcome, chat. Like, I'm scared of the outcome, chat. Like, it's so many, though. Like, all right, we was right here where we was at, part two. No spoilers, right, no spoilers. Who the bro. fuck did I marry? Part it's two. only 10 minutes. They all only like so 10 both, minutes, bro. They short um, TikTok clips. Come on, they not movies, bro. We, we both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits. I'm scared of Paul. I don't want to pause this, y'all. But this is a fact, bro. You got to listen to the signs, chat. Your tire, your tire blowing out was the universe trying to stop you from meeting. Bro, facts, bro. Bro, y'all got to pay attention to the signs like that, bro. Like, no cap. Bro. Like, that's that. a real sign. Like, sometimes you got to um, pay attention so to the signs. So, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed. Only we thing that's about crazy about signs, chat, is you never know when it's a sign for good or it's a sign for bad. Because sometimes it could be a sign for bad, like... I meant for good, like, dang it, my tire, if she would have been like my tire, if my tire would have never blew, I would have never meet you. And sometimes it could be for good. But sometimes the signs could be for bad, bro. Like, for real, like. About people, which um, <laughs> is kind of up Don't my alley signs, of humor. It was, just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song by the t well by the time this video posts I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about I think I met my wife tonight, and I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my. Here we God. go with the signs, bro. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about Love midnight. Talks, so Love during that. this Love conversation, that. he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there, he went to San Diego State, he played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know, life, he loved it out there, so he stayed. Um, that's when he joined the company. Um, and then he explained that he also did arena football, but only did it for about two or three years. He claims that while he was doing arena football, the team that he was on won a championship. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, okay, I didn't know that they had championships. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended. Like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. So, he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon. I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. Why? So, we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with. That will come back later. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking, and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, okay. So that means that this, this must have been like 2020. If she talking about the lockdown, then this this was 2020, maybe 2020 COVID, maybe. I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue 
was where are we going to quarantine? So the question quarantine, was, yep, are we going to quarantine? So so basically, his- chat. I didn't I didn't know this, chat. I didn't know what date this was. Like, but as you can see, now that this comment make more sense, she said she googled arena football and the organization went bankrupt in 2018. So this happened. I didn't know this, but this happened 2020. This happened quarantine. She met him around a little bit before COVID started. So this was 2020. Place Maybe late 2019. Had like a studio type of situation. Like it clearly where he was staying. Um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment. But he kept telling me like this is temporary because I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me. He showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house so i was just like okay this is definitely temporary like he's not trying to stay here long term and she was apologizing in the email i'm so sorry you know this should have been taken care of before you got here but it wasn't da, 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 da. i saw the email i saw the email i read it i read the email um so the decision was are you we're going to quarantine at the studio or we're going to quarantine in my house first mistake i made well there's a lot but this was a mistake i made so ladies caution moment during one of our dates um because keep in mind in those two weeks we were seeing each other quite a bit um nothing physical or anything like that just two people who were who i thought were really on some all right let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something he came to my house when he came to my house i had a three bedroom two and a half bath townhome he was in a studio now i'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened so some t- some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn this off? No. Okay, I still need that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse and I'm in like a little studio yeah let me let me let me go ahead and pursue this what i need to do to quarantine here the decision was made quarantine at my house so the state went on lockdown he came and stayed with me um in my home two weeks two weeks man tequila two weeks first day on the first date they holding hands Within two weeks, the nigga moving in for quarantine? And for the most part, in the initial beginning, it was fine. It It was fine. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of, bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband? Like... It was it was a struggle for me because I knew better and I and don't come for me I'm just telling you the way I grew up it was like that it was not sitting right with me but at the same time I didn't want to quarantine by myself I did not want to so there we go um, so he moved in we talked about the bills let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills he paid all the household bills He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent, because my rent at the time was less than $1,000. He paid the utility bills. And and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. And so he paid he paid all the household bills. So my okay. shit really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. Damn. And 
Mm. I am not, this is where it's not going to make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes because this was still March. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, he's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Or is he going to buy a house where it's for us? Because we are going they to try moving to fast, bro. They make moving this too thing fast, work, bro. be official, get married, have a family. So the question now on the table is, what are we going to do? Because I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. I refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a for a, a family home. They moving so fast for the two of us. He was like, "This is how much I was approved for." That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for seven hundred. And All right, who the fuck did I marry? Oh shit. All right, part three. Who the fuck did I marry? Oh, so shit. this is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top, stating that he had been approved for a mortgage, for, for excuse me, for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage or a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house. So he was like, "We can't go over seven fifty. And I said, "I remember asking him." Can you afford the mortgage on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can. This is when he explains to me, I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like, I'm I, financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for $750,000 mortgage. So he told me that his money was in different savings accounts. He said he had an account with Chase Bank. He had an account with U.S. Bank. And he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. The offshore oh, account, I was like, why? And he explained something about... Oh, the U.S. <clears throat> excuse me. The U.S. imposes taxes oh, shit, on yes. money when you have a certain amount in in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have the so you have the money um, to pay for to pay for a home. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase chat. saying... No that spoilers, like, though, chat. They say my son played arena football. They gave him meal vouchers for restaurants. They don't have deals with... They don't pay anything. Oh, my God, chat. Oh, my God, chat. Oh, my God, chat. He was approved for 750000 So, I went off of what I saw. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever, ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He was fine with that. His whole attitude was... You know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses that I wanted to tour. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, 
we could not tour a home. It would have to it would have to be a virtual tour. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. Not Cobb County, but nevertheless, it's in Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a, um, a, a uh, FaceTime tour of the house. The house was, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Four, five bedrooms, four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home and the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. I really like the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April, just for timeline purposes. This is April. So he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house he was like if you like it because again it was COVID we weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there so he said um, I'll put an offer in we'll see if it's accepted I said okay so he puts an offer in he's telling me he put an offer in I need to clarify some things he told me deep, and the child. things that I actually saw so for this house in Douglasville he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me and it was like, so this hey, wasn't that you know, long, I'm... Chuck. I'm I put the offer in and what they're asking for um, is proof of funds. And I, and I know any, I don't, I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. So I was like, Hey, you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage. Like from the paperwork I saw, it was only in his name. So he, um, he called him, I guess they talked. I was not there, um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming, my ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved and <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down, I believe, 5000 He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay, no problem. So... This is what he told me. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the from the realtor. And the realtor is like, hey, I'm just checking to see what you know what you guys want to do about that house. So I was confused. I'm at work. Um, and I said, Oh, I I was told that he put an offer in. And the realtor was like, he did? I didn't know that he put an offer in. And I said, well, why wouldn't you know? Like, he told me he put the offer in and he um, he had paid earnest money, $5,000 earnest money. And so the realtor was like, well, let me call him and find out what's going on with that because I didn't know anything about it. So red flag, of course. So I call him and, he's, and he, in true narcissistic nature he flips the script and he like goes off he's like cussing going off like he shouldn't excuse me I have the hiccups he shouldn't be calling you if he has a question he should call me because I'm the one that's on a mortgage he was like and now it's you know it's gonna be an issue and I said well did you put the offer in with him or not 
And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business. <sighs> so. Oh, God. I never, heard, I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, dang, is the house under contract or is it not? He was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is what, this is how crazy things work out. About three days later on realtor.com, I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm going to decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So, showed my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. He was like, I, I, like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had the heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to be true. Um, but once I saw the house was under contract, I absolutely believe that, okay, this, it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, Dang, and so we had God. driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when, when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Like he was he was very methodical and planning and saying this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home, Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take. They were going to take the appliances. He had a printout. Let me be clear. He had a printout. So it said on there that they were going to take the appliances. So we needed to get a new stove, um, new refrigerator, new microwave, all that stuff. So we went to Home Depot and Lowe's and I, I went ham. I chose all these new appliances and i'm scared chuck here's where we get into the shopping i'm scared chuck. <laughs> i'm right. kind of scared chuck. so we go to home depot we go to lowe's i'm choosing all these appliances he's taking pictures of this of the um the SKU number we have representatives helping us 29 minutes chuck. and he basically explains to them hey we're, we're buying a house um, we should be closing sometime in June. Can we order this stuff now? Can I can I put a hold on it? Like, what can we do? Because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery. I stood there. As the Home Depot rep said, we can hold it in our warehouse. Like, you can buy something and we can hold it. People do it all the time, especially with COVID. So I watched him pay. Um... I want to say it was about three or it was either 350 or 500. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them. And they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this. So I was like, okay, good deal. Like we got the appliances next. Let's go to rooms to go and Ashley furniture and find, um, actual furniture. So we went all around rooms to go. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I I, I saw all these things that I wanted. Again, he's taking pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I didn't think anything of it because, again, I just saw that we held the appliances. So I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, so April turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, oh, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. And he's like, he's like 15 houses backed up, so it'll be a while. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording um, 
audio diaries. I don't know why. I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, a, in an audio diary. And I still have them. And I would, I would save them by the date. And um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind. So I was like, I knew, I knew there was something, something was nagging me like, mm. but I, I kept pushing it out of my mind. I was like, you saw, th this is what I reminded myself. You saw him pay for the appliances. You know, the house is under contract. You know that he told you that, um, he's the one who put the house under contract why would he, like i remember saying to myself why would he lie about that this is so easy to verify why would he lie about that have you caught him in any other lie and at the time the answer was no um so i really was like maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do like i i was right. questioning myself and then answering my own questions so inspection didn't happen around mid-may i found out i was pregnant oh my god 2020 oh when my I god i was pregnant he was ecstatic and i was like oh shit the reason why I was oh shit is because number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was, I, I felt like it was probably going to be a high risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that oh, nagged, God. I cannot tell y'all how much it nagged. Oh, there God. was a lot of internal oh, <laughs> struggle. My God. Chuck. And between my family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point. I told oh, them, God, you know, that I was pregnant. Um, went to the doctor, oh, everything looked good. Oh God. Um, but again, oh, because God. it was COVID, he couldn't go in with me, um, into the actual room. So, you know, doing any sort of ultrasound, doing the blood test because my HCG levels were really high. So the doctor was like, Hey, it might be twins. We don't know yet. Um, you're still kind of early, you know, along, um, they gave me a due date. The due date was January 26th of 2021. Um, so, yeah. Uh, May, found out I was pregnant. So there was now more of a push into, we got to get a house. We got to get the fuck up out of here. I'm not having a baby in Riverdale. Okay? Nothing against Riverdale. But I ain't having a baby in Riverdale. So... We need, we need to, we need to find out what's going on with this house. And so he was very, he was on top of it. He had an answer for everything. Um, he was like, you know, I'm a call and find out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later, oh, they're going to do inspection on the, on the house, like in two days. So I was just like, okay. Keep in mind, I'm I'm taking his word for it. I'm taking his word for all this. So he's like, they're going to do an inspection. Um, once we get the inspection report back, then we will know what you know what we are going to be responsible for. What what are we getting ourselves into? So, um, <laughs> I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Um, the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Um, and the issues that they, that there were for the house were minor. It was not, it was not a bad, cause we did have a discussion about it. He was like, it's not, it's nothing that we can't handle. Then he said that we were set to close, um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. Mm. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This oh, is God. what he's telling me. He's a scammer. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. 
And so for some reason, again, there's still that nagging part. For some reason, I'm scared of the end, girl. I didn't start packing. I anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it enough in my life. I hate moving. But I did not start packing up that house at all. I was just like, you know, I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast that it was like mm. I can barely keep my eyes open half the day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember I did record, again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Um, that was crazy, Chuck. The whole time, that's the best thing to do, bro. Audio record diaries, bro. No cap. Because that's why she probably explaining her story so clear because she probably got all this in her audio diary. Like, this is what's going on today. This is what I'm feeling tomorrow. This is what's going on today. So that's probably why she explained it so clear and easy, bro, because this, this probably been on her mind, bro. That's she, she started making a whole story, a story time about it. Like. And so I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet because that's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking... What if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't I'm get, scared, Jack. What if he's lying? But again, there goes that thought process of, why would he lie about this? Like, who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not? And then he's showing you all this paperwork. Like, come on, you can't be that jaded that you don't even believe what's in front of you. All right? So, now we're going to go into part five. Oh, God, Chuck. Oh, God, Chuck. Okay, part five. Who the fuck did I marry? So, I'm questioning all this stuff in my head out loud on my audio diaries. And then, once again, I'm like, but look at what, you, look at what he's giving you. Like, he's paying... He, he, it wasn't a question about money. It was just a question of, are we really are we really about to move into this house? And <clears throat> keep in mind, he's paying all the household bills. He still is. So, we were supposed to close before Memorial Day. We didn't. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. And I didn't know enough about the process to question stuff because I really wasn't involved the way I should have been. And it was giving me a lot of anxiety. So I'm pregnant with a lot yeah. of anxiety. Um, and if push, if I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all, I was not expecting that I was probably going to have a healthy pregnancy because I was stressed. And what Damn. I was stressed about is I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't really involved the way that a normal relationship would be involved. Just being honest. Um, so we did not close around, we moved now into June. This is now going into June. Around June 5th, I looked at the house again on Realtor.com. I don't know what made me do it other than, and I don't mean to sound super spiritual. I know that people are like, you know, you may or may not believe in God, but I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, probably the Holy Spirit was like, look at that house on Realtor.com. So I looked at the house on Realtor.com. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close on the house. We're about to close. It's our house. We got furniture, da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Um, he's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, 
who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. What the fuck does off market mean? Like now I'm really freaking out. So it shows the name of the real estate agent for the seller. I don't remember her name. I called her and I said, you know, my, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at one, two, three main street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available or, you know, I, I pulled that card and she was like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th. I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> And she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh, man. Okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really wanted, you know, we love the pictures of it. And we're getting ready to start a family. So I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity to see it. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her. And I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers and I remember, I, and somehow, again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her, but the answer was that it was an older white couple, older white couple. So I get off the phone with her. I record an audio diary and in the audio diary, I specifically say, okay, there is no house. He's going to have to get out of this lie somehow. Because now I realize at the very least, he was lying about um, him being the one who was under contract. I knew enough about that. So I was like, what? Oh, um, God, chat. Oh, my how God. How is he going to get out of this? Again, I'm list I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in that audio diary, how is he going to get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say he wants to pull out. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. So, I had a decision to make. This getting crazy, chat. As ugly Hold as on. this decision was, I made the decision, you're about to have a baby with this man. He's paying all the household bills. Let him get out of the lie. And that's what I did. I purposely made the decision that I knew he was going to come back and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit on why he couldn't buy the house because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. The house is already sold. Um, Damn. And this is the part where I said, I'm going to be honest, even though it's going to make me look bad. Because most women in their right mind would have would have been like I'm out right. and I didn't so um, sure enough oh, God, he came home he didn't really say anything that day the next day I asked him about the house and he said my friend the realtor um, he was like I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate and when he said that I felt so much relief because I knew that I had been prepared for he's gonna give you some bullshit 
So when he said there's something with the interest rate, I said, you know what? If the int this is literally what I said, y'all. If the interest rate isn't good, then we shouldn't move there. We should probably let this house go. We should cancel whatever furniture we we ordered or you know appliances. She played the game. And let's just look for another house. She played the game. How the game supposed to be played? But if it come down to where she's sad in the end, she played, she lost in the game, bro. She played the game how it's supposed to have been played, bro. Not trying to say it like that, but you got to treat a liar like a liar, chat. Let me close off this car real quick. I hear that in the back, bro. But you got to play a liar like a liar, chat. You got to play the game, bro. You can't let the game play you. You see what I'm saying? house and people good for women and men bro people are good for being manipulative bro people are good for being manipulative bro real crap but you can't let the game play you bro you gotta stay solid bro i said i would like to be moved before the end of the year i said i really don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house i would like i would like to be done with this before then and he was he the way i said it was so calm and he was like okay he was like i'm gonna call the friend the realtor and tell him i'm backing out of the house and i'm gonna see if i can get my earnest money back and i remember looking at him i was standing in the kitchen and i cocked my head to the side and i said okay get your earnest money back and let's find another house. And so that's how that first house fell through. So, um, fast forward. I'm looking, I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you 10 minutes. So, this is part five, part six is coming up. But, um, subsequently, what ends up happening the next week, which is mid June, I was at work. Um, and I started cramping, started bleeding. Um, and at this point, my doctor, I had just had an ultrasound earlier that day. So I went to work because the ultrasound was, was fine. I went to work and the cramping and the bleeding started. And I started crying because I, I kind of knew what was going on. And um, my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So she was like, this pregnancy is not going to be viable. Damn. So I'm crying hysterical. And now we're going to get into part six. Damn, Chuck. Okay, so this is part six of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So where we left off so obviously um my doctor no for real chat heartbeat look it's a flat tire zelo zelo the the, the the thing where you buy the houses on the miscarriage all signs from the universe where i gotta see these comments chat you said a baby had to wait bro they said the baby had to get her a little more vision and left in peace. Nah, facts, bro. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, my God, yes. God always gives signs and always take them. They end up to be the right decisions to make. Nah, facts. Nah, facts. Okay, so this is part six Damn. of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So, where we left off. So, obviously, um, my doctor had called and told me there was no heartbeat. The pregnancy was not viable at that point, And I was cramping and spotting at work. Went into my best friend's office and immediately started crying. She was like, what's going on? And I said, um, I told her what the doctor said, and she grabbed her keys, grabbed her purse, and was like, let's go, I'm taking you home. 
on my way home, I called my boyfriend and told him what the doctor said. And he was like, I'll meet you at home. So he was coming from Duluth, went straight home. Um, and so about 24, 48 hours later, I had a doctor's appointment and my doctor gave me three options. First option, let everything happen naturally. Your body will expel the fetus on its own. Second option, you can take a pill, which will induce expelling the fetus at home. The pill basically will cause you to contract and expel. The third option was to go into the hospital and do a DNC. I did not want to do a DNC because I did not want to be in a hospital with COVID going on. Um, and for whatever reason, I did not do the option of let it happen naturally. So I chose to do the pill. His birthday was um, June 17th. My ex's boyfriend, excuse me, my ex's birthday was June 17th. So the decision was made. We're going to celebrate his birthday that day, go out to eat. Um, and then that night I would take the pill because we both were off from work the next two days, next two or three days. So um, went out to eat, to try to celebrate as best we could. And then took the pill that night. That night was the most traumatic, excruciating pain I've ever put my body through. Um, I do not recommend any woman, if prayerfully you don't have to go through that, but I don't recommend taking that pill. Damn, child ready to lay down. Child, this is good, good, bro. Um, I, st I spent the whole night in the bathroom just crying in so much pain. I couldn't take, they gave me a narcotic. I couldn't take it because it was, I found out I was allergic to it. So it was causing me to like projectile vomiting. And it, it, it was a mess. So, um, and he was right there. You know, he was scared that he needed to take me to the ER. But in the morning, the pain kind of subsided. So about 72 hours later, I had another doctor's appointment where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound to see if everything had passed. Everything did not pass. So because of that, my doctor was like, we're going to have to do a DNC. Damn. Um, my DNC Damn. was scheduled for the first week of July. My boyfriend, my ex. We watching the time go, chat. Um, that was always the plan. Two days before. Her um, life was moving fast, fast Tequila. me. He comes home and tells me that he is up for a promotion. He's up to he's up to be promoted to VP. Because of this, the president of the company, <coughs> excuse me, is coming in. And it was going to be this huge business meeting he had to go to. Um, the business meeting was scheduled for the day of my surgery. Mm. And so I'm just I'm I'm throwing a fit. Because I was like, you you know, you you there's no way you can do that meeting. Like, I need you to take me to the hospital and all this other stuff. And so he offered to have his sister take me to the hospital. Um, apparently, his sister lived in Douglasville. I was like, no, because I've never met her. Like, I'm not, I know, I'm not having a stranger take me to the hospital. No, this is a private situation. I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. Why you, why she, why you? I mean, I, I know your best friend ain't got nothing to do with this. Why you just ask your best friend? Though? So my aunt was going to, had offered to take me. Okay. I and see. then my friend who took me home from work had offered to take me. Okay. So at that point, um, we get into an argument because he's oh, like, God. my sister is. Chat, chat right here. The first argument, the first big argument be everything, chat. The first be the first big argument be everything, chat. This the whole story about the un unravel right here. What's up? The whole story about the unravel right here, y'all. Literally. You know, you you about your family. So why can't she step in? And I was like, nah, because I don't know her. Period. I don't know her. So So my friend offers to take me to the hospital because I was all distress that he's saying he has a business meeting and he can't take me so i remember being on i-75 on the connector 
on the phone with her crying because I, I was so embarrassed that he wasn't going to be the one to take me and that I was needing to rely on someone else to take me to the hospital in order to get a DNC done. And she was really great. She was like, girl, this is why you have a village. Like, it's okay. Things happen. Nah, the facts. world is crazy right now. I will take you. You're going to be okay. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. My friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. They're going to get me prepared to he go back, back. Um, to the surgical ward or whatever. And the response I got. Oh from, my God! This was chat. Is y'all right, is y'all ready for the response, chat? I'm scared of the response, bro. I knew it was gonna be something crazy, bro. I, I'm scared of. I ain't gonna lie, chat. I'm scared of the reply, chat. I ain't gonna lie, chat. I'm scared of the reply, chat. I'm scared of the reply, chat. Um, his new executive assistant named David. Now, when he told me he was up for the promotion, he did tell me that part of getting this new job would be that he would get an executive uh, executive assistant named David. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David, if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting because, you know, she's my fiance's having... Um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. Chat, my heart is pounding. So I text him, David responds. He said, yeah, Mr. Blah Blah told me that um, you are having a procedure done. If you need me to get him, I can go get him. He's in a meeting. Just let me know what you need. And I just said, no, don't bother him. I'm just giving an update that they're about to take me back. And David so responds and says, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Please let me know if there's anything I can do. Chad! Chad, what the whole time that was him, Chad? Bro, I'm scared of the ending, Chad. This story is so good, bro. So, I have the procedure. I wake up and I am now in recovery. I should be in recovery 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. I wake up first thing I ask and I remember asking is where is so and so the nurse who was so sweet you know she was like everything went well um you're doing I ain't gonna lie chat you can't you what's up what's up the six in the stream y'all I ain't gonna lie y'all you can't ignore the universe bro you can't bro you can't ignore the signs bro she said we spoke she messed up ignoring the first sign bro the first red flag bro she messed up ignoring the first red flag bro he's on his way so I said okay you know okay I kind of dozed back out but I could still hear everything that was going on I just could not keep my eyes open to save my life so I hear her talk to the other nurse and that's when she said yeah um doctor so-and-so called her fiance and his executive assistant picked up and the executive assistant said that he was in a business meeting and that um you know, you could relate to him what you need to say and he'll, you know, tell Mr. He'll tell the fiance. And my doctor was like, hell no, <laughs> HIPAA, um, I need to speak to him. Right. So apparently my fiance called the doctor back about 30 minutes later and the doctor informed him she'll be ready to be discharged in about an hour. You know, you can make your way and come pick her up. He said he was on his way. He was on his way from Duluth to Atlanta, which is not a huge distance, but the time of day, one thing about Atlanta, there's always traffic. So he should have been there within the hour. I should have only been in recovery an hour and a half. Oh That's my God, chat. Part. Oh my God, chat. Oh my God, chat. Bro, bro, chat. Chat. If it took him five hours to get her out of recovery chat, we already know the point of the story is who the F did I marry? 
So obviously this nigga was doing something crazy, chat. We're going to part six, seven, bro. We on part, part seven, seven, bro. Who the fuck I'm scared, chat. I'm scared of So he should have I should have been in recovery at Northside Hospital right. for about an, at most an hour and a half. Right. Um subsequently I ended up being in recovery between three to three and a half hours. Dang. The nurses kept calling my ex asking what's the status because they were actually getting ready to do a shift change. So they kept calling, asking, what's the status? What's the status? Like, where are you? I want to say that they called a total of three times and they spoke to him twice. Um, Damn. So at this point, I knew that they were all like, where is her? Where is her fiance? Like, what right. is going on? Um, he said he was stuck in traffic. And so he was making his way there. He eventually did get to Northside Hospital. Um, and I'm they for it, wheeled me down because, um, again, he couldn't come in um, just because of the protocols. So when I got in the car um, and I'm in pain, but yet drugged up, couldn't keep my eyes open, couldn't really. I was just I'm so scared. It, Chad. But I remember him calling my aunt and my mother and letting them know I picked her up. We're on the way home. Let me get her settled, and then um, I'll give you guys an update. I remember that. What I did not know was that he had texted my aunt and my mom and asked them to not bother me for, like, what? a week. Like, just please don't reach out to her. Let her just what? rest. I am from New Jersey. I am from an African-American family. You don't tell my black mama or my black aunt that um you what know please fuck? don't facts. for a week <laughs> nigga crazy <laughs> no that's facts I didn't know this at the time but i'm just interjecting that part i'm trying to stay in the timeline but um he he did apparently do that and my aunt was like why well, will fuck you up anyway so no nah, that's home. crazy um he waits on me hand and foot I recover, um, just needed about 24 to 48 hours to just get my mind right. Um, during this time, in between the when the house in Douglasville fell, Chad, my mouse um, fell through, we had not talked about a house. So I guess it was about a week later after the DNC, he decides that, you know, do you want to start looking for a house again? Excuse me, I have hiccups, y'all. Do you want to start looking for a house again? Because of what happened with the house in Douglasville, I felt like I was smarter this time right. to say, you know, Can't get I fooled be twice. involved in every aspect because I don't know what the fuck happened with that house in Douglasville. But what I do know is that he he lied to me. Right. I didn't think, I, I didn't know then what I know now. I just knew he lied about putting in, or excuse me, I knew he lied about being under contract. So, um, I told him, I said, I don't want to work with your friend who I've never met, never talked to. I know that he has talked to him because he's talked to him in front of me. And I'm going to demonstrate on one of the videos how he used to do his phone calls. Don't worry, it's coming. So, we found a new real estate agent. Really nice guy. Um, his name was Scott. I am using his real name. Really nice guy. Um, and we told him what the budget was. And Scott was like, okay, when you guys are ready, we can start looking at houses. Try to look for houses that are empty because you can actually tour those. If it's a house where someone's already living in there, chances are it's going to, have to be a virtual tour because of COVID. So I found a house, um, that I absolutely, in total, we must have looked at about 15 houses. Um, but I found a house in Smyrna that I absolutely loved. We toured the house. Everything about this house was perfect. The house was listed for 699000 I thought like she about to get, yeah, she it about to get, got a new construction answer. build. The only issue was that the basement was not finished and he wanted the basement to be his man cave um again i went with him to tour this house 
So this was already feeling very different than the situation in Douglasville. Right. Because we did not actually tour the Douglasville house. We only did a FaceTime um, virtual tour. Right. This house in Smyrna, we toured. We toured this house more than once. Um, and it was it was gorgeous. Fucking gorgeous. Right. So we talked about it. He said that he had the money. Um again the price was six ninety nine. He said he felt comfortable putting in an all cash offer. Now, if you remember on the videos before, he told me he had money in his savings from when he played football. So when he said an all cash offer, even I knew you you got that kind of money like where you can cut a cashier's check for 699000 And he told me he did. He had money in savings um, from when he played football. And he was very comfortable paying all cash for this home. Something ain't right with that nigga, bro. So, the real estate agent, Scott, sent over the paperwork. The paperwork was sent in both of our names. It was sent to my email. Um, that was another thing that I changed after Douglasville, right. everything gets sent to me. And then I will be sure that he signs it. So he sent it to me. I looked over the offer. Um, we were asking, excuse me, we were going to put in an all cash full price offer with um, a request to have the basement finished. Also, we were requesting for the seller to give us an answer within 24 hours. Um, we were requesting a quick closing um, there's just some of the things I remember. I remember 24 hours, like I didn't want to wait on y'all think about it. 24 hours, let us know if you're accepting the offer or not. And then also a quick closing because it was a, a new construction. So we didn't have to wait for the current tenant to move out. We didn't have to do that. So I watched in our bedroom as he pulled it up because it was a electronic document. He signed his name to the offer for six hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars cash. Damn. He re requested again. The seller let us know in twenty four hours if they were accepting the offer. So we submitted the offer at around six p.m. We were requesting that by six p.m. the next day they let us know if the offer was accepted or not. I watched him sign the offer i sent the offer back to scott from my email all parties had signed scott texted us and said i got it i'm submitting it i will let you know what they say let's go in to part seven. Oh, uh, sorry okay so i just want to clear up some things that i really all right, part eight of who the fuck did? Wait. Okay, so I just want to clear up some clarification that video. I realized um, is kind of creating some confusion. So just allow this video to serve as a stop sign. Let's clarify. First of all, the story background. He was born in Philly, raised in Philly, and moved to Augusta. Um, story is that he moved to Augusta for high school. After high school, he went to college at San Diego State, enjoyed San Diego State, stayed in San Diego for quite a while, um, got married in out in California, had a house in California, played arena football out in California, but his family was back here in Augusta, Georgia. Um, he still had a lot of family up in Philly, but for the most part, he had a sister in Augusta. He had a sister in Douglasville. He had a brother in Baltimore. He had another brother in Philly, and he had um, a brother in Nashville. So I just want to clarify that in terms of um, the demographic, not the demographics, but the geography. Born in Philly came to Augusta for high school, went to San Diego State for college, played football. I opened it. Inside was the ring that I had wanted. 
um, that I had chosen at the jeweler. And he was like, all right, so this means that you're going to be my wife. I was pregnant. So, again, when I asked y'all to give me grace, it's because there are certain things that's just like, girl, what was you thinking? Wait! I have physically met his aunt who laid out there but still had quite a bit of family here in Augusta. Excuse me. Hold on, chat. Hold on, um, bro. He also had a sister, I think I said, who lived in Douglasville. I have physically met his aunt who lived in Augusta. I've met his brother who lives in Augusta. Um, I have spoken on FaceTime with a brother who lives in Baltimore. Um, and then I will demonstrate how he used to talk to the brother that lives in Philly. That's coming up. You haven't missed that. In terms of the proposal, you did not miss the story of the proposal. I simply didn't want to share it because it was embarrassing. Basically, he gave me three ring options. We went to a jeweler at the Mall of Georgia. He had me pick out three rings. I told him which one I liked the most because I knew it wasn't a, a romantic proposal at all. I knew which ring I liked the most. I told him which one. He, he basically said, when I'm ready, I'll give you the ring and I'll propose. Fast forward um, about, I guess it was summer because I was actually pregnant when the ring came. We were sitting at the dinner table. He took the ring box out of his pocket, slammed it on the dinner table. And I was like, what is this? He was like, open it. I opened it. Inside was the ring that I had wanted, um, that I had chosen at the jeweler. And he was like, all right, so this means that you're going to be my wife. What? I was pregnant. So, again, when I asked y'all to give me grace, it's because there are certain things that's just like, girl, what was what you thinking? Fuck? Trust me. No, for real. There's no. This thing. nigga slammed it on the desk, um, chat. So there was never a, will you marry me? It was more of a, we're living together. We're having a baby together. Um, we need to get married because that nigga was moving too fast, bro. The backstory also was that his dad was a retired police officer, but at one point his father was a pastor. That nigga slammed the ring on the table, so he could quote and Bible said, like "Nobody's business." As oh, you my know, wife, so can Lucifer. But anyway, he could quote the Bible like no one's business. Um, and so, so that nigga was like, "Bam, you my wife." <laughs> That's how he. Ended up <laughs> No, I slammed on the table is crazy. You telling me, bro, said, open it. <laughs> Check. You said that nigga said, bad. bro, that nigga said, eh, open it. <laughs> and that's how it happened. And I will try to post it. But I was wearing the ring. Um, don't worry. There's more to that story as well. So just wanted to clarify some. This is a good ass story, um, Chuck. For the people who were like, wasn't it weird that he had a sister who um, lived close, but he's from Philly. So I just wanted to definitely bring clarity to what he told me um, was the backstory. Born in Philly, came to Augusta for high school, went to California for foot, um, college, played football at San Diego State, played football in arena football, um, worked at Apple, and then joined the condiment company in California who then transferred him back to Georgia. He was married in California, um, and he told me he got divorced in California. That is important as well. That will come up again later. Um, and so the ex-wife, at this point in time, at the time that I'm telling you part seven, which is the last video I just posted, right, we just watched part seven. the ex-wife lived in California with her two kids, his two uh, stepkids. The two stepkids were 17 and 20 or 21, but they were that age group, that age group. And he was saying that he was very close with them. So he wanted to keep a tight relationship with them. Um, and he talked to them, if not every day, every other day. 
when I say, and I, I when I say this, I need y'all to understand. When I say that he talked to someone, it means that he he was on the phone in front of me talking to the person. I hope that that, because I will touch back on this. He was on the phone in front of me talking to the person. So he talked to his siblings every day. He talked to his aunt almost every day. He talked to his family the way I talked to my family almost every day. Right. Um, and again, I will demonstrate how he used to do the phone calls. I will also demonstrate how he used to do the work phone calls because he called me every single day from work. And he would talk to people while he was on the phone with me. And I could hear people in the background. But that's a whole nother part. So again, buckle let's get let's get into I the promise. next one. Bro. I'm reading your comments, I'm reading your questions, but I wanted to bring this video just to clarify some stuff. Come on, bro. I'm ready for eight, bro. I'm right. ready for eight, bro. Eight of who the fuck did I marry? Right. So we submitted an offer on the house in Smyrna. I sent it over to Scott, our realtor. And Wait, next day sure. comes, Scott asks if we can take a phone call. So he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. Bro. Okay, so I just want to clear. All right. Part eight of who the fuck did I marry? So we submitted an offer on the house in Smyrna. I sent it over to Scott, our realtor, and next day comes, Scott asks if we can take a phone call. So he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. We don't exactly know um, why, um, we don't exactly know why he didn't accept it, but the bottom line is, is that we figured out later on that he didn't want to finish the basement. So the offer was not accepted. The house fell through. I was okay with that because, again, I knew he had put in an offer. So we continued looking at other houses. We found another house um, in Smyrna that he really liked. Um, I thought that it was way too big for just the two of us. Um, and so the price of this home was much higher than the 750000 that Chase had approved for the mortgage. So what he explained to me was that he was willing to do the $750,000 This nigga mortgage, willing to do everything, ain't he? Also willing to put a significant amount of the money and savings on the house which meant that he was now comfortable going from 750,000 up to about 900,000. Again, his his whole explanation was I have the money where I can put down a substantial down payment, bring down the price of the home and then basically mortgage the rest of it. So, that was Not for real. Point. I was Not, not for real, chat. With the home. This facts. Cuz when she was like the reason why the house fell through and they talk about me because god is trying to pull you out not once twice but three times bro this is the third time the universe is telling her like girl stop doing this bro <laughs> it's the third time chat it's the third time something fails bro the first time her tire foil her tire bust on the way to the first date to this guy the second thing she have a miscarriage no, the second thing is that the first house didn't go through because he lied about everything. Then the miscarriage. Then they get another house. And then, come on, bro. It's the fourth, another red, it's the fourth red flag. Um, <laughs> over $900,000. Um, but again, keep in mind, I saw the Chase paperwork. So I was like, I just feel more comfortable sticking at the seven hundred dollars facts. mark. That's what you were approved for. Let's go with that. By this point, this is now fall of 2020. Um, we have been talking about marriage. I had my ring. Um, he had made VP at the company. And again, he was calling me 
every day from work. Um, the, I need to kind of explain how the company was ran because when you think VP, you would think he would be in an office. It was a condiment company. So they actually were producing the condiments and I'm not saying the name of the company on purpose, but they were producing the condiments um, in this particular plant location. So a lot of times he would simply tell me that he walked the floor um, checking in with his subordinates, basically. Now, how did he go to work? For the most part, at this point, he left before I woke up. However, pretty much he wore dress pants, um, kind of like a deep, a dark navy blue cargo pant. And he had a polo shirt with the company logo on it. What I saw a lot of times is that he would not wear the polo shirt to work. He would wear like a company t-shirt. He would wear rubber sole shoes and the um, navy blue cargo pants. I didn't think it was a uniform, but it definitely, it reminded me of what someone would wear when I worked at Amazon, if you're gonna be doing manual labor. He didn't go to work sloppy looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Nowhere near suit and tie. Um, it is fair to note that outside of work, he was a man who he loved to dress. He loved to wear the latest Jordans. He loved to collect watches. He collected a lot of Invicta watches. Um, this dude he, is like... He loved to collect hats. He wore hats, baseball caps everywhere because he didn't like the shape of his head. Um, so in terms of how he dressed casually, the man, he could dress. Um, in terms of how he dressed for work, yeah, he didn't dress like a VP. But his excuse was, I'm constantly walking the production floor and I can't be in a suit and tie walking the production floor where they're creating the condiments that we're selling. So by this point, that's understandable. Again, this is fall. I ain't gonna lie, chat. This dude is like, um, chat. This guy is like, bro. This guy is so unreadable, bro. This guy, I, I can't, I couldn't tell y'all what's what's going on with this dude, bro. Like as as bad as I want to say, he probably lying about the work stuff too, bro. As bad as I want to say that too, bro. This dude is unreadable, bro. Like, this dude is a character, bro. Like, he, like, I don't know, bro. Like, um, let's we're see. We're still touring houses as much as we can because it is COVID. Um, we had found another house that we really like. Man, this dude is unreadable, bro. house that I really, truly wanted to put bro. This nigga got no scam, bro. This nigga's an AI companion. This was now going to be the second house that we put an offer on. He put in the the asking price, I believe, was about 700000 He put in under asking um, an offer for about... <laughs> he said he had notes for this <laughs> That nigga had this shit written down, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Bro was following notes, bro, because ain't no way. Ain't no way. Then it's like he playing it so crazy because he doing the stuff, though. Like, the nigga put $600,000 down on the crib. The first time he lied about it, though. The first time. The first house they was about to get, man. I don't know if you was still going to the store, bro. But look, the first house they was about to get, bro. Bro said, bro, I'm going to put all the money down. I'm going to put everything down. I got it, bro. Then the nigga, the real estate agent who was getting them the first house. This nigga called her like, what, what is y'all still getting the house? She like, he said that he put it in. He said, no, he didn't. Then he called him. Now he's missing. He's nowhere to be found. He's not coming back. Then the next dude, he say, the dude say, I got my own real estate agent that's going to get the house. Then they end up never getting the house, bro. Like, out. Six hundred and fifty. This whole story guessing, is crazy. But he I'll a scammer, bro. I don't know what he is, bro. On this, and put it on this story. Um, the reason that that house fell through, <sighs> we found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank. 
we found out that the septic tank had an issue and it would have taken about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to fix the septic tank. The seller... Let me guess. Let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, he ain't nothing. Oh, Tom, he kept. <laughs> oh, Tom, he kept. Let me guess. So, look, y'all, this is the third. This is the, the one, two. This is the third house. This is the house he found. It's a house that he found that he said he liked. And it was too big. She said it was too big for both of them. And now she's saying this. So this is the third house. It was about 700000 He put in under asking um, an offer for about 650000 I'm guessing, but I'll try to find the house and put it on, this, and put it on the story. Um, the reason that that house fell through, <sighs> we found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank. We found out that the septic tank. That nigga knew that. <laughs> That nigga do that. That nigga say, oh yeah, this house sitting on the septic tank. We ain't gonna get this one. So I'm gonna tell her we gonna get this one. <laughs> you gotta be a crazy nigga if I to do something like that. Septic tank had an issue and it would have taken about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to fix the septic tank. The sellers were not willing to fix the septic tank. Let me guess. He about to be like, I fix it. <laughs> Personally, I ain't really care for the house that much. I'm the one who was like, I don't really want it. So even though we put an offer in, we had 24 hours where we could uh, pull our offer back. And so we did. Once we found out, I believe it was in the disclosure. And if you're a realtor, please feel free to tell me if I'm using the wrong terminology. But I believe it was in the disclosure that they told us the septic tank needs to be replaced. That's when I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want that house. Um, so we pulled out. The house fell through, and so I was fine with it because, again, I was heavily involved. I saw him sign the offer. I knew every step of what was going on. I'm scared it was about to happen. Our real estate agent, Scott, was amazing, but you will see in, when I get to it where he made a mistake as a real estate agent. So house number two fell through. Um, we then moved on saw a few more houses and then we get to house number three okay oh i'm going to pause talking about the houses because now i need to introduce what happened with the cars oh god 